everyone, welcome to TechFlix. In this episode, we'll be showing you how to get set up for being a maker with your own home lab. Yes, it's almost as cool as it sounds. This is by no means a definition of what a home lab should be. Based on different interests, everyone will want slightly different kit and not everyone will want the more expensive devices. But we'll take you through the tools that we use regularly. First of all, a home lab isn't just about putting aside space for making stuff. For us, it's also where we go to design. This means it has to be a friendly space, good for both thinking and working. To help spark our creativity, we have lots of inspiring little bits around, like previous projects or stuff that we've recently bought and want to incorporate into new projects. Don't be fooled. This space might get pretty messy, but it's prime inspirational material. Once we've had an idea, we want to write it down pretty quick before it slips away. We like to have writing stuff to hand, not just pens and paper, but also a big old whiteboard. There's nothing worse than having a great idea and then forgetting it because you were scrabbling around trying to find a pen. Which brings me to the single most important thing in a home lab, or any lab for that matter, knowing where everything is. We have lots of basic and small components like resistors, capacitors, transistors, connectors and wire. Because of their small size, you can fit loads of these components all in one place. Like this handy component organiser. Having labels on the drawers of your organiser and not cross-contaminating makes a world of difference when you're trying to make something. It prevents a lot of frustration and saves you a lot of time when you can rely on your organisation system to be accurate. This is our lovely tool wall. It has pretty much all the basic tools we might need, both for projects and more generally for home DIY. We've got screwdrivers, hammer, pliers, wire strippers, multimeters, etc. I won't bore you listing tools. We do also have toolboxes, but we prefer having stuff out where we can see it. I keep on doing that thing where I think I don't have a tool and then I go and buy the tool and then I come home and realize I did actually have the tool. It was just at the bottom of the toolbox. So that was a waste of time and punishment of having a goldfish memory. Anyway, it's also nice when you're working to be able to have all your tools out where you can see them and easily get to them while simultaneously having them pretty neatly. If I didn't have this, I'd probably have all my tools out on the floor, which isn't so neat or organised and a little bit stressful. Most of our building is done on the workbench. Ta-da! Yes, I'm aware it's just a table, but we call it a workbench to make ourselves feel fancy. Generally, the first stage of our prototyping work will be on a breadboard, like this one. We also have a handy multimeter for testing stuff quickly. This is probably one of our most used pieces of kit and is really important for us to have a good one. This one also has the added bonus of being magnetic, so it sticks straight onto our tool wall, which I discovered with joy the first time we got it. It's the simple things. If there is one thing that you do by yourself, get yourself an ESD mat for your workbench. They basically drain static charge from anything you put on them. There is nothing more heartbreaking than destroying a new component you've just bought because you were rubbing your feet on the carpet as you walked down the steps. We also have this lovely movable magnifying glass lamp. This isn't a necessity for all labs, but a good side light is a must have for us. And it's great when I'm leaning over the table trying to do some work and the ceiling light just casts the fat shadow of my head on what I'm trying to do. This gets around that. When we take the project off the breadboard and onto perf board, we need a soldering iron. This is pretty key to all our projects. Soldering irons aren't just plug and play and you need to be super careful when using them to avoid those nasty fumes. Make sure you get yourself a fume extractor. As a minimum, you should have an extractor fan like this one. And we're waiting for our giant tubing to arrive, which will attach to this and shove out of the window. It might seem annoying, particularly in the middle of winter when it's snowing and minus two outside, but future you thanks you for being conscientious. Right, enough of the safety lecture. 
A soldering iron which can vary temperature is really important for working with different devices. For the small connections on LED strips made of thin metal, you want to use a low temperature, otherwise you can burn the connections out. It's really sad when this happens. But you also want a soldering iron which can get really hot for if you're working with thick wires. We also now have an amazing lab bench power supply. It allows you to control voltage and current, meaning you can test your projects, but also do things like charge batteries. Before we got this little beauty, we had a power supply in a cute little Words original box, which we made ourselves following Great Scott's tutorial. Thanks Great Scott, you've taught us so much. We also have some solar panels outside, charging up a super massive battery. Hopefully, we'll be able to upgrade it soon as well as this pretty shocking charge controller. Look out for our solar panels in one of our new projects coming soon. We're making an electric skateboard. Some of our projects require us to build a case. This usually starts with a lot of squabbling around a whiteboard or over a piece of paper. Once we're done with the infighting and have settled on a design, we get on with some very good accurate measuring. We use a digital micrometer for this, which is obviously much faster and much more accurate than reading off a ruler. This can seem like a pretty basic piece of kit and it can be tempting to go and get a really cheap one, but bear in mind that spending a little bit more on this will get you a more reliable product that won't do you dirty mid-measure. We've been there. When we have a finalised design, we begin with the digital design in Fusion 360. Once we're happy with it, this usually involves more heated discussions, we slice it in Cura and finally send it to our 3D printer, which is running Octopi. To the 3D printer room! <laughs> 3D printing is super fun and really rewarding. We use our 3D printer a lot, so we have this entire little room basically set up as a shrine to it. A really, really small shrine. There's also a lot of filament in here. We bought this TV unit really cheaply secondhand and figured that all the nooks and crannies would be ideal for project storage. On top, in really orderly piles, we have filament boxes which we repurposed as project boxes. This helps us keep everything in one place, so if we ever break a project mid-make, we can come back to it in future without having to turn the entire lab upside down looking for some tiny component that we misplaced. We've got all our filament hanging from 3D printed hangers on this nice rail above the printer. We used to have it all stacked, but this turned into an absolute leaning tower of filament nightmare. We've also got some funky lighting, and it makes it feel like a bit of a tech cave in here. So that's a lot of hardware. Now onto the software, which is pretty crucial to making all this work. This is an area we're really passionate about and interested in so you'll hopefully see more software development in our future projects. When making new projects, we always use Git for version control, and we also back up our stuff to the cloud. We've learned the importance of doing this the hard way. Mistakes happened, the pain still stays with us. We have our own home development pipeline, which is hosted on a Raspberry Pi. Hopefully we'll be able to explain this in more depth in another episode. And this is great because it means that we can use industry standard best practices for our projects. To name a few, we host our own Git home repository. We build projects with Docker. We use Drone for continuous integration and deployment of our software. We constantly monitor the services we run so we know if something fails. We automate backup of everything and have scripts, which means if something goes wrong, we can start again using the backed up version. Our home development pipeline means we can do things like update all our CCTV cameras around the house with a simple git push. So that's our home lab. It's always a work in progress and as you'd expect, it looks very different when we're mid-project. We should probably impart some wisdom from our journey to creating our own little home lab. Basically, we put aside this space because it got to the point where electronics and tools were all over the house and we finally made the decision to devote some proper space to making and creating. It's easy when starting out to buy cheap tools because, well, they're cheap. But we've learned from experience that this is a really silly thing to do in the medium term. 
They're not always fit for purpose or compliant, and it's really upsetting when you're midway through a project and the tool you need breaks. For this reason, we try to stick to good mainstream brands. We found that R&D's products meet industry quality and tick all those compliance boxes without costing an arm and a leg, which is ideal. We hope you enjoyed nosing around our little lab. Hopefully you got some inspiration for your own, or maybe you can tell us what we could change for the better. Thanks for watching.